Hello friends, welcome back to my tutorials on blocks. You know that blocks are the best method to handle with repeatability in a drawing. Please go through my previous video tutorial on blocks by clicking on the link provided if you want to get a complete understanding on the fundamentals of using blocks in a drawing. In this video, I'll take you one step further and I'll teach you the concept of block redefinition or reference editing with the help of a live example. If you want to edit a block, you have to create one. So I'll introduce this concept by creating a two paneled arched window using polylines. I'll start by creating the outer frame of the window. For that, I'll use a polyline. So I'll click on the polyline command. Then I'll pick my start point over here. Then I'll go to width option. I'll give a starting width of 5 and an ending width of 5 centimeters. Next, I'll move rightward through a distance of 100 centimeters. So I'll type 100. Next, I want to move vertically up. So I'll keep my cursor in the vertical direction. Then I'll type a value of 150. Next, I'll go to arc option. Then I'll click on arc. It's a curvilinear segment. Next, I want to pick a point over here, which is right on top of this. So I can very well track this point. Okay, so I've used tracking. Then I'll right click again. Then I'll come to line option. Then right click once more. Then I'll close it. This is the outer frame. Next, I'll draw another polyline from this end to this end. Next, one more polyline from this mid to this mid. Next, I'll draw a polyline from this mid to this nearest point. Okay, so I'll just hold down my shift key and press the right button of the mouse simultaneously. Then I'll choose nearest and I'll pick a point over here. Next, I'll draw a rectangle to indicate the window shutter or panel. So I'll click on rectangle. This is my first point. Then you can move all the way right down to pick the lower right corner of that rectangle. Next, I'll click on the mirror command and I'll choose this member as well as this rectangle. Then I'll choose this particular endpoint as the first point on the mirror line and this endpoint which is straight down as a second point on the mirror line. Then just give an enter to complete the mirror command. Hence, you can create a two panel arched window. In fact, this window is made up of several objects. How will you know the number of objects in this? For that, you can just click on the erase command. Then I'll select the objects. Now we have got a message that there are seven objects in this. Now I'll just press escape to cancel this operation. Suppose if you want to use such 100 windows in a particular project, then you will end up creating 700 windows. So this will definitely add to the file size. You can optimize the file size as well as deal with the issue of repetition in a more effective manner by applying the concept of blocks. So let's make a block of this. For that, I'll click on the insert tab. Then I'll click on the create block button of the block definition panel. Now I'll give a block name of AW2. Since it's a two panel arch window, then I'll choose the insertion base point as this point. Then I'll select the objects to be blocked as all these objects within a standard window. Then I'll choose delete option here. When you click on delete, the object on the screen will get deleted. But the software creates a block definition in the invisible block table area of your drawing file. Please refer my previous video if you need further clarifications on this. Now I'll disable open in the block editor button over here because I don't want to open this in the block editor. I'll give OK. Now the block is created. Next, I'll create a block reference from the block definition which we have created just now. For that, I'll click on the insert tab. Then I'll click on the insert button over here in the block panel. Then I'll click on the thumbnail of the window which we have created. And I'll pick the insertion point over here. Next, I'll create multiple copies of the same window in a matrix fashion with fixed number of rows and columns. For that, I'll give array command. So I'll click on the home tab and I'll choose array and I'll select a rectangular array. Now it'll ask you to select the object to be arrayed. I have selected it. Now we have an array object over here. Just give an enter to go out of the array command. Next, I'll click on the array object. Now you will see a number of parameters related with the array in the ribbon. I'll change the number of columns to five and number of rows to six and distance between individual items in a column to 200 and I'll keep the distance between individual objects in a row to 300 and I'll just click on close array button. Now we have created the array. Next, I have to erase the items in the central column. 
For that, if you just click on the object, the entire array object will get selected. So what you have to do is just hold down the control key and click on individual objects. You can see that those objects will get selected. Now click on erase to get rid of these objects. Next, I'll create a rectangle to indicate the wall face of this apartment. So I'll just click to define the two opposite corner points like this. Next, I'll create a parapet on top. For that, I'll use the same rectangle command by giving an enter. At the first point, I'll click here. Now see if the tracking is on. If the tracking is off, just press F11 function key to activate it. The tracking is on. Now, just give a value of 120 as the height of the parapet. Next, I would like to extend this edge rightward through 30 centimeters. So just click to activate this grips and uh, I'll activate the center grip okay, by clicking. Then I'll keep the cursor in the rightward direction. Then I'll type 30. So like I'll stretch this edge towards left side through 30. Now I'm going to mirror this parapet to create the foundation or the plinth. So I'll click on mirror. There's a first point on the mirror line. Next point on the mirror line. I've created the plinth. Next I'll create the stair room using a rectangle. I'll click my first corner over here and the opposite corner over here. Now I'll just click to activate the grips here. Then when you bring the cursor onto the center grip, you will get an option called convert to arc. Now you can convert this into an arc. This drawing indicates the front elevation of an apartment. Now I have taken this drawing to conduct a presentation to my client. During presentation, my client has suggested me to incorporate a change in all the references. My client wants all the arched windows to be converted as normal windows with flat sunshades. And that has to be incorporated in several windows. Since these objects are block references, such changes can be easily incorporated. Because the software establishes a link between uh, the definition and the references, any last minute changes can be easily incorporated on the references by incorporating it on the definition. This is what you call as block redefinition or reference editing. Let's see how this can be done. In fact, there are several methods in AutoCAD to perform this activity. I'll teach you one of the methods. I'll click on insert tab and block editor icon to get the block editor interface. This interface can be used to perform any editing on the block definition and this area gives you the list of all the definitions you have in your drawing. Now you have a block editor interface. I'll click on home tab and I'll erase these two members. Then I'll perform a trim to trim of this particular portion. Again one more trim to trim this area. Okay. Next I'll create a rectangle. Next I'll perform hatch. By typing the letter H you will get hatch interface. Click on that. Now you have this particular hash pattern here. I'll change the hash pattern to solid and it changes to solid fill. Now you can click on close block editor. When you click on this button, the software will ask you whether you want to save these changes to the definition AW2. Yes, I want to save these changes to the block definition. The moment you click OK, you will see this change getting updated on all the references you have in your drawing. And this is exactly what you call as block redefinition. Suppose if you want, you can eliminate one or more windows from this process of redefinition. Suppose the sunshades of the first two rows of windows should remain the same. That means when I update the definition, the windows in the first two rows should not get changed. So I'll just undo the changes which I have performed. Now I've got my windows with arched sunshades back. Next I'll draw a polyline from this nearest point to this perpendicular and one more polyline corresponding to this point over here to perpendicular. Okay. So this whole unit of the apartment is treated as a duplay unit or as a penthouse apartment. So the client want to retain the windows in this area as arched windows whereas the rest of the windows should be changed as normal windows with flat sunshade. Previously when I have incorporated the changes on the definition it got instantly reflected to the references because of the link existing between the definition and the references. 
If you don't want a particular reference to reflect this change, you have to cut this link that is prevailing between the definition and the references. Using explode command, you can actually cut the link existing between these two objects. But when you click on this particular array object, you can see that the whole object is treated as a single unit. So first of all, you have to give an explode command by typing the letter X and you should select the array object. Now this object is no longer an array object and when you click on it, you won't get the parameters related with the array in the ribbon. Now you have to perform one more explode which should not reflect the changes performed on the definition. So I have exploded all these references. Now you can see that these objects are taken back to individual objects. Now let's perform the same activity of a block redefinition by going to the insert tab and I'll click on block editor and I'll select the definition and I'll give OK. Let's perform the same change. I'll give trim uh, to trim off uh, this as well as these objects. Then I'll give erase command to erase these two spikes. Next I'll make a rectangle over here. Now I'll type the letter H for hatch and I'll pick a point inside this rectangle and I'll choose the solid fill as the hatch pattern and I'll close the block editor. When I'm asked to save the changes, I'll give yes. Now you can see that these changes which are performed is reflected on all the block references which is existing here. Since these objects are exploded, they are not connected to the definition and the changes performed on the definition will not get reflected. So using this technique, you can eliminate any number of block references from block redefinition. So that's all about the concept of block redefinition. You can make a try. In the next video related with blocks, I'll deal with the concept of dynamic blocks. Using dynamic blocks, you can incorporate additional functionality on a block and you can achieve more productivity. I hope this tutorial was useful. Please do hit the like button below this video if you liked it and subscribe to my channel. I'll catch you in the next video. Till then, bye bye and take care.